prior to my coming here, you didn't have to. Good evening, I'm Daniel Ackerman, the Curator of the Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts, and you are live with us in Winchester, Virginia, in a very special location as part of our MESDA Match Campaign, where we're taking you live with the Summer Institute students as we travel up the Great Wagon Road uh, from southeastern Pennsylvania into Maryland and Virginia, and we are, as I said, live in Winchester, Virginia. Before we start, I want to say how much we appreciate all the support we've gotten from everybody. Uh, your comments, your shares, your likes online have all been wonderful. And your support through Mesda Match has also been great. Uh, your support really helps us do what we do, which is tell the story of the South using things. I am joined here at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley by two special people. Uh, one, Emily Campbell, who is one of our Summer Institute students. And also by, you may remember from last night, also by Nick Powers, the curator Hello again. of the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. And we are actually looking at some objects in their storage as we um, work with Emily on her project. Emily, why don't you tell me a little bit about your project? I am Emily Campbell, and I'm with the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. And I am working on spoons by Thomas Campbell um, of Winchester. And so the Mesda collection has two teaspoons that have the Campbell name engraved on the handle, and they were thought to be produced by Thomas Boyle Campbell of Winchester, Virginia. So, Emily, here we are at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. Now, as I said, oh, sorry, that's the wrong image. Um, let me pull up this one. So, Emily, um, you know, Mesda has two spoons by Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to turn the camera around because what Nick, the curator here, has pulled out for us is this whole table full of Campbell silver. Tell me, what, um, what have you learned about Campbell silver today? Well, I've gotten to compare it as well to other silversmiths in Winchester. Um, Nick pulled out this teaspoon by Campbell, which is very similar to the ones at Mesda. They're part of a set. Um, and then we've been comparing them to other examples from the city. For example, these um, spoons by um, James Meredith, who was a silversmith um, that did work with Thomas Campbell at one point and also worked um, in, as in his own shop. Um, Wood is for Robert Wood of Winchester, who is a descendant of James Wood, who um, uh, uh, founded Winchester. Founded Winchester. Yeah. Thank you. And um, we've also been comparing them to other uh, forms that you, we find in Winchester, and in particular. Mm -hmm from the more standard forms that are common to the one example of this ladle. Um. Yeah. So I also wanted to pull out a few examples from the Campbell's, sometimes competitors, sometimes partners. So one of my favorite objects from the MSV collection is this great punch ladle made by the firm of Hartman and Phillips, one of Campbell's main competitors. Uh, you often see ladles with uh, straight handles, but this is one of a great example with a twisted stem leading up to uh, what are probably multiple generations worth of ownership of the monograms at the top. And I also wanted to pull out, so this is uh, kind of contemporaneous with Campbell, but I also wanted to go back a little bit to show the evolution of uh, silver here in the valley, really going all the way back up the Great Wagon Road, uh, pulling out more hollowware forms like uh, this beaker, one of a pair, made for the marriage of Robert Wood and uh, Comfort Welsh in the 17, uh, in 1774, and retained by the family 
to our benefactor, Julian Woodglass Jr. So in addition to the later examples of flatware, like some of the ones that Emily's looking at by the Campbells, we're also very lucky to retain examples uh, that really bring us the full length of the wagon road from Philadelphia down here to Winchester. This is really, really cool, and it really, to me at least, shows how valuable this kind of field study mm-hmm. field study is. Mm-hmm. Now, Emily, um, you are uh, you work at Colonial Williamsburg. Yes. You work in their architectural collections. Yes. How did you end up working on silver? <laughs> so um, I work in architectural preservation, um, but I was encouraged to uh, try something new while I was here. Um, I've also studied ceramics in the past. That was... Um, my focus actually in graduate school and for my thesis. And so I was drawn to the spoons, I think because of my love of plates. (laughs) And um, I thought it would be an interesting challenge. And then I was really drawn to the connection with Winchester and learning more about a Virginia town in the valley. Very cool. Now, we had a really great day here, Nick. The collections here at MSV really are absolutely phenomenal. (laughs) Um, What are, I'm going to zoom in on them. Sure. What are these? So, in addition to, you know, part of Mezzo Summer and Suit is not only learning about the objects, but also about how they're made. So, unfortunately, these are not owned by the Campbell family. Uh, That would just be too too much of a coincidence. Uh, But we acquired these two uh, stakes uh, which would have been uh, incorporated into a mandrel in a silversmith shop. Uh, and these help, the, the tapered edges on top help silversmiths to uh, shape the bowls of spoons. So these two are being used by the Campbell, or I'm sorry, excuse me, by the Meredith family. Um, yeah, actually, so, if you, oh, oh, so we're going to go over here. So this gives you an idea of how these were made to help shape the bowls of teaspoons. So the smaller one is made for a teaspoon, but the larger one is made for a tablespoon like these over to my left, uh, made by Thomas Boyle Campbell's brother, William, who dies early in 1815, uh, and made for the Glass family, in which descended through the Glass family to uh, the museum's collections. And of course, the Glass family is integral to the founding of the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. Exactly. Uh, The Wood family and the Glass family intermarried in the 1820s, uh, and our benefactor, Julian Wood Glass, Jr., uh, who died in 1992, was a direct descendant of James Wood, and many of our great objects that retain their best histories from Winchester and the Shenandoah Valley descended to Julian and are now part of the museum's collection today. This is so cool. Now, Nick, today we also talked, uh, had the privilege of getting to meet a contemporary artist. I'm going to bring up a picture of our time with him. Tell me a little bit about Robert Cross. Where to start? Uh, I met Mr. Cross several years ago, uh, and you can see some of his little sculptural buildings behind us as we're talking with him. Uh, Mr. Cross is a rare connection to slavery in the Shenandoah Valley, even uh, today in 2017. His grandfather, William Cross, and his wife, Sarah, were enslaved in the McCormick family plantations in what's now Clark County, Virginia, a little bit to the east of Winchester. Uh, And so he really his story and his family background uh, forms the basis for the pieces that you see behind us there. Uh, Each one carries the story of where his materials came from, uh, all from recycled materials, and they really ground themselves in our community uh, and in a valley story. Well, um, Nick, Emily, I'm going to let you all get back to doing your important research. I mean, this is all what Summer Institute is about. It's about getting out in the field, looking at primary sources, seeing what's out there, and making connections. And this is just great. So thank you both for joining me. I'm going to flip this around for a second. Thank you both for joining me. It's been great having you here, and I hope you at home have enjoyed this peek behind the scenes of the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley, one of our many stops along the way. It's been a busy, busy day here in Winchester, Virginia, beginning at Abrams Delight, um, spending time at two incredible private collections, then at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley, where Nick and Betsy Davidson and Jeff Evans have all been great for us. More tomorrow as we get out of the city and into the country. (laughs) Um, Tomorrow night we'll be live from the Sites House, the home of Jeff and Beverly Evans, which some of you may know through Facebook. And again, I really hope you're enjoying the sneak behind the scenes, not only 
uh, here at the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley, but also with our students along the Great Wagon Road. This is the heart of what we do. We teach people to tell the story of the South, and your support helps us do that. So if you'd like to make a gift to support our Mesda Match campaign, feel free to go to www.mesda.org slash match. And of course, keep following us on Instagram and Facebook and using the hashtag Mesda Match. I'm Daniel Ackerman, the curator of the Museum of Early Southern Decorative Arts, live from Winchester, Virginia, and I will see you tomorrow night.